involved in the presentation of this. We pray that you would work and speak through them to our hearts this evening uh, as a result of this presentation. May Jesus Christ be magnified, glorified, uplifted, and praised in all that is done and said here tonight. We'll be careful to give you the glory for that. We all pray that together in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Without further ado, the Soaring Hope Drama Team for Christ presents Come to the Table.
this'll be good. I've heard that he's good and kind, just and noble, and a genuinely wonderful person. But I haven't actually seen him yet. Did you just say you haven't seen him yet? Yeah. So you don't know if he's good looking? A girl with your kind of looks deserves a fine looking hubby, preferably someone with a nice nose. <laughs> a nice nose? Yes. The nose is what gives a face character. <laughs> what is this book you've been reading? One thousand do's and don'ts for a king's bride? <laughs> what kind of things do you read about in this book? You're not really going out dressed like that. Does this make me look fat? Well, I hope not. <laughs> Are you going to eat that? Let me show you how it's done. Can you get a real job? <laughs> what is this pathetic book written by? Lord Scott Quiggle? <laughs> pathetic. What are you doing? I need that book. Oh, fish cautious, please. Yeah, this is all simply ridiculous. You deserve better than to waste your life waiting for someone you haven't even met. Forget about the king. It isn't worth it. Well, I do admit that it does feel like I've been waiting over 2,000 years, but I just don't know. Oh, trust me, Ecclesia. I've traveled the world. I know exactly what this king of yours is doing right now. He's out there partying. Well, you're sitting in here learning how to make him happy. Well, what can I do? <sighs> There's a whole world out there, Ecclesia, just waiting for you. Think of the parties, think of the music, and think of the dancing. Besides, a girl with your kind of looks will have men practically falling at her feet. Sorry. It's time for you to get out there and live life for yourself. Follow your heart. Just 
30. Well, actually more if you want to include the women, children, and older men. Your army is going exponentially. In no time at all, it'll be larger than the king's. Yes. We also need to weaken the king's army from the inside. You know the king's head general, Judas? He's a masterful tactician and excellent in combat. I've also heard he's very faithful to the king. Ah, but I've studied the young fellow. He has one weakness. What's that? Judas does not love anyone more than he loves himself. Just a few well-timed, enticing words. And they'll be serving me before he knows it. But Do you doubt my method after serving me all this time? Remember who you're talking to. Who am I? The deceiver, sir. Deception is my greatest weapon. And there's no way I'm going to stop using it now because it works every single time. Everyone knows you're the greatest swordsman that ever lived. 
You spread your fame is spread to the west side of the kingdom. Everywhere I look, people chant your name. Children run in the streets shouting, Kings have knights their horses and chariots, but we, our hero, Judas Iscariot. Wow, I'm not famous. The people are not fools. They know who fights for them. I do my best to serve the king. When was the last time the king recognized your bravery and honored you for your service? Well, he treats me as a friend. He even asked me to dine from at his table each day. You're not as important to the king as you think, Judas. If the king really thought highly of you, he'd give you power and wealth. But he alone wants that for himself, and he alone was the richest. True. If I had all the power and wealth, I would get rid of poverty in this land. <coughs> so much more than what the king is doing now. You'd make a much better king. But the king is a nice guy. You're a nice little cut, it, Judas. I have an army waiting by for you to take command. Under your leadership, we will take over the throne, and you will be king of this land. But what are we going to do with the king? Oh, come on, Judas. It's better for one man to die than for the whole nation to perish. Sir, what is it? The king was wondering if you'd be joining him at his table this afternoon. Yes, give me a minute.
for your stay either, and you've been here for nearly five months. Without your purse, I'd say you're sinking in debt. What am I going to do? Well, I need to pay up somehow and then get out of here. If I could just have some time. <laughs> I'm not giving you anything. You're not staying here, and you're not leaving this place till you pay me on it. <laughs> <laughs>
Zacchaeus, come out of the tree. <laughs> come on, I know it's you in there. Hey, how did you know I wasn't the tree? And how do you know my name anyway? I'm pleased I ran into you just now. Just in time for lunch. From my old friend. Wait a minute. Did you just say dying with you? I believe I did. Here you are. As much as I've stolen from people. 
And no longer am I going to be known as Zacchaeus the mischief maker. I'm going to be known as Zacchaeus the peacemaker. You know, Zacchaeus, this whole transformation seems crazy. But you know what? You're the boss and I'll back you up. Yeah, that's right. Lead the way with your new shoe. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thunder and typhoon, don't they look nice? Shiny, and they make me feel so merry.
Peter, here. There has never lived a greater source of Who are you? Who cares about me? It's you we're talking about. A good for nothing blacksmith who thinks he's worthy enough to serve the king. Uh, how dare you insult me, Mr. Whoever you are? You're a poor, lowly, working class man with zero ties to any kind of royalty. You have nothing to bring to the table. Well, the king still chose me. Ah, but the king doesn't know who you truly are. Not even you know who you truly are. You have no right to talk to me like this. You think you're so faithful to the king, don't you? You think you'd be able to give your life for me, but you here are merely impetuous, quickly driven off by your emotions. This great allegiance you pledge for the king is fake. You could deny it at any moment. Stop, you menace! You think you're strong, Peter, but deep inside, you know who you truly are. You're a weakling, aren't you? You don't really love the king, do you? I don't say kindly to people who do. I... Your life depends on your answer. I don't love the king. What? I don't love the king. I'm so sorry. My hearing seems to be failing me. I said I don't love the king! Third time's a charm. <laughs> you, Peter, are a disloyal traitor. What makes you think you could fight for choice and for the king in combat? You just denied loving him three times. You will never amount to anything. You will never be Peter the warrior. You'll always be Peter the denier, Peter the sinner, Peter the failure. That Peter is who you truly are. He's right. I denied loving the king three times. How could I? All right, Pete, we're back. Peter! Pete! Pete, where are you? Pete! Pete, come on. Pete! Come out. Where are you? Come on, Pete! Pete. Pete. Come on, Pete. Pete. Come on, Pete. Pete. Pete.
I'm a good for nothing blacksmith. So I am. I'll never be Peter the warrior. I'll always be Peter the denier. Peter the sinner. Peter the failure. Yeah, that's right, I'm a failure. I actually had a chance to serve the king and I blew it. I absolutely blew it. King will never take me back. He hates me.
doesn't look like it. You're not getting paid today, that's certain. Mrs. Squad knows you. I've been here nearly four weeks and you haven't paid me anything. Are you being sassy with me? Watch your mouth, Ecclesia. I think this deal I'm giving you is a pretty good one. I could be paying you nothing. But that is exactly what you're doing. <laughs>
looked all over for her. I mean, she wasn't at the inn. I was surprised by that. I looked all over the woods, and nobody knows what woods like I do. She wasn't there. I have been looking all over the marketplace. I cannot find her anywhere. I'm really starting to get worried. Wherever am I going to find this girl? I mean, I can't miss her. She's tall, blonde, dances well. Maybe I should go look in the forest again. Hey, nice bell. Thank you. Oh, wait! It's you! I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Know each other? I have been looking all over the world for you. I am so glad I found you. You have? Yes, look. My name is Zacchaeus, and I used to be a pickpocket in the woods. And the king gave me a new pair of shoes in exchange. Shoes? Yes. Why does everybody have a problem with this? <laughs> he gave me a new pair of shoes and he changed my life. And so now I'm trying to return things that I have taken from people. So I might have borrowed. No, I just took your purse at the Five Star Super Splendor Inn. Here it is, with all the money inside. I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive. Of course I can. It is so good of you to return it. Well, all the credit goes to the king. The king's just wonderful, isn't he? He certainly is. You know, I really wish I could meet him in person and thank him for this incredible gift that he has given me. It's just Speaking of gifts like his, it's a little something you could give to us as a present. I don't know who you are and how you know my name, but you're kind of creepy, so I'm just going to have to go. Where's the sword? Hey, you're the guy I took the sword from in the woods the other day. Yes, and now I want that. But wait, Peter said that that sword belonged to the king. Peter? Yeah, he's told me to return it to the king. I gave it to him. You dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Zacchaeus, that sword didn't belong to the king. It belongs to us. Now you need to go and get it back. Wait, that sword was special. I bet you're trying to steal it from the king. Zacchaeus, perhaps it's time we have a little chat. I don't really want to. <laughs> now Zacchaeus, I see you're very faithful to the king, but for what? Just because he gave you a good-for-nothing pair of shoes? Can't you see he's secretly ruining you? What? He's convinced you that giving is better than receiving, but you know better. You're quite the expert at pickpocketing. It's how you made your living. How are we going to get your money now? If the king had given you a noble job, that would have certainly deserved respect. But instead, now, you're going to end up poor, penniless, and just where the king wants you. Is that the truth? Yes, it is, Zacchaeus. That's why we need to take over the throne and have a truly just king rule over our land. That's why you need to get that sword back. No, he doesn't. Because the king is just and good. You are a liar. And how would you know what's a liar and what's not? Because I am girded with the belt of truth. Zacchaeus, following the king may not bring earthly wealth and fame, but it brings so much more. He changed your life, Zacchaeus. He gave you a life of purpose to go out into the world and represent him, to help others instead of hurt them. He has given you a job, Zacchaeus, a very noble job. No amount of wealth can bring what you now experience. I know you wouldn't want to go back to how you were before, a pickpocket with zero joy, love, or peace. You know what? You're right. I am not going to listen to you anymore, liar. Fight! <laughs> we'll get this sword back ourselves. We have a large army, you know. We're bound to the people. And when we do, all the king's loyal followers will have the same fate as you. No!
You must mobilize our army. We're going to take that sword back to the palace. We must not have the king get it.
This helmet. Okay. You're going to need that. Topsy. Yeah? We're going to need some music. Everybody, let's armor him up. <laughs> Taking your first love, I give you the crown of righteousness. And Peter, you have been faithful, even to the point of death. I give you the crown of life. I have prepared a great banquet for you. Come, for everything is now ready. Come to the table. Legions of them waiting to obey his every command, and yet God didn't send his 
my illness and sickness. He came to save us from himself. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords left his throne above and came to earth in the form of a man, Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the form of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow both in heaven and on earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus went to the cross for a purpose, to destroy and defeat the works of the devil, to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness and translate us into the kingdom of light. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. Amen. If you have repented of your sins and accepted Jesus as your Savior, the enemy knows that he cannot destroy you, so he will do everything he can to discourage and distract you from being the person God has called you to be. Amen. You have entered the war zone. It's a war between light and darkness, a war between godliness and ungodliness. It's a supernatural war and you do not fight against flesh and blood, but against an invisible yet real enemy. The Bible calls him the prince of darkness, the ruler of the world. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's the father of lies, the tempter, slanderer, accuser of the brethren, the deceiver. He does not want you to enjoy the abundant life you have in Christ. He strategizes and schemes against you. He comes against your boldness in Christ, heaping on you guilt and shame, reminding you of past mistakes and bad choices, hoping that you will forget that you are no longer under God's judgment but under the, under the blood, and that Christ has taken every accusation against you and nailed it to the cross. He comes against your desire to live a holy and pure life, trying to convince you that you are full for wanting to be different and that you will end up alone and miserable. He comes against your heart, convincing you to follow your own desires and dreams instead of trusting the sovereign, almighty God who alone can do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. He comes against your contentment, causing you to forget that Christ alone is all that we need and that it is God who equips us for every good work. He comes against your calling, making you fearful and anxious, causing you to think that following God is too difficult and not worth the risk. He comes against your identity, making you insecure, leading you to doubt who God says you are in Christ Jesus. Even if you don't believe every single thing the word of God declares to be true about you, the enemy does. He knows that you are a child of God, John 1, 12. He knows that your body is the temple of the Most High God and His Spirit lives in you, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. He enemy knows that we have a high priest who is able to empathize with our weaknesses and that we can approach God's throne with confidence, Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. He knows that you are forgiven and that there is no condemnation for those of us in Christ, Romans 8, 1. He knows that you have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Though your sins were as scarlet, they have been made white as snow. Though they were red as crimson, they are as wool. Isaiah 1.18. The enemy knows that you are the righteousness of God because God made Jesus, who had no sin, to be made sin for us so that through Christ, we may become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21. He knows that you are loved with an everlasting love and unfailing kindness. Jeremiah 31.3. He knows that through Christ, you are more than and that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 37 to 39. He knows that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Matthew 5, 13 to 14. He knows that you are God's friend and that you have been chosen and appointed by God to bear much fruit. John 15, 15 to 16. He knows that you are a child of the light, a child of the day. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. The enemy knows that you are a royal priesthood, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and his wonderful light. 1 Peter 2, 9. He knows that you have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. He knows that you are whole, made complete in Christ. Colossians 2, 10. The enemy knows that you have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power 
stand against this enemy in our own strength. Our carnal weapons have no power over him. In Ephesians, the Apostle Paul gives his battle cry. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's demons. The good news is that we are not alone in this battle because we have a God who will never leave or forsake us. Jesus is our great shepherd and we are his sheep. He leads us, guides us, and walks with us. He protects us, provides for us, refreshes us, restores us, rescues us, and comforts us. Psalm 23 says that the Lord himself sets the table for us and invites us to come and dine with him. And it's not a potluck, my friends. We bring absolutely nothing to the table. But if you have put on the garment of salvation, you are invited. The Lord invites you to his banquet of bountiful blessings. His menu includes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and huge helpings of grace and mercy. Wow. At the table, there are helpings of every good thing to meet every need and fulfill every desire. And we don't have to wait for eternity to sit at the table. The Lord has a table for you right now, no matter what circumstance you might find yourself in. As Jennifer Rothschild says, we can come to the table every day and be happy in Jesus, even when life is hard. His character sets the table, and His grace saves you a seat. Amen. Wow. So come, I'm a child of God. Let us persevere to dwell in His presence daily, living a life holy, pleasing, and acceptable to Him. And to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Christ Jesus our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.